What's going on, YouTubers? It is your boy, Deluxe Man, and welcome to another SummerSlam review for my SummerSlam review series. We go into 1996, the year the NWO was born in WCW. This is also the year that ECW started to get some actual mainstream attraction as well. Now, I believe ECW doesn't get a TV deal or a pay-per-view deal until 1998. But around this time, they're really starting to gain some attention. I think they gained so much attention that WWF actually did a series of Raws featuring ECW. So 1996 is when that boom period for wrestling really started to come into fruition. And we won't see the real fruits of it until next year. And then 1998 is when it's at its highest. You can even argue 1999 and 2000 is when it's really hot. But this is the start of the next boom in wrestling. Unfortunately, we don't see it reflected all that much with this SummerSlam. As a matter of fact, this is another skippable show. And I say that with the utmost respect for those last two matches. I feel like that Boiler Room bra between The Undertaker and Mankind, and that main event with Shawn Michaels and Vader. Both really good matches. You should definitely take the time to go watch them. Match the night goes to that Boiler Room bra. Absolutely. That's just my opinion. I'm pretty sure someone thought, or most people thought, the main event was great and deserved a lot more attention. I'll get to that in just a second, why I didn't like it as much. And some of you will agree with me on what I have to say. But other than those two matches... The rest of this show was, ugh. It might as well have been an episode of Monday Night Raw. Or just a really bad, forgettable episode of Monday Night Raw. Let's go ahead and break down some details, and we'll get right into it. So, this show was 2 hours and 50 minutes long. So, basically almost 3 hours. The date was August 18th, 1996. This was in Cleveland, Ohio, in the Quicken Loans Arena. I don't think it was called Quaking Loans. It was called something else. You'll have to tell me down below. Uh, attendance was 17,000. Didn't even sell it out. They weren't selling out arenas at this time. Unfortunately. And this was during Shawn Michaels' run. And yes, I'm pretty sure that had a toll on him. Going out there having some of the best matches that year. And nobody came to see it. And your competition was Hulk Hogan in the NWO. No wonder he was frustrated. No wonder he was hard to work with. Will you stop and think about how Shawn Michaels was back then? I'm not excusing his behavior. He was a horrible person back then. Even he'll tell you that. He was horrible to work with. But you kind of have to understand why he was like that. He was literally the best performer in WWF. Nobody could touch him. At his peak, Shawn was definitely one of the best. One of the greatest of all time. Even after his prime, he was one of the greatest of all time. But it's... Easy to see why he was so frustrated. You're having that kind of a performance and you're getting your butt kicked on a weekly basis in the ratings. And then you have your friends leave you. Kevin Nash, Scott Hall, no longer there. That's Razor Ramon and Diesel. They're now in WCW kicking his butt with the NWO angle. And you also got people, I think Teddy DiBiase eventually leaves. I think X-Pac, excuse me. One, two, three, kid, Sean Waltman eventually leaves. It also goes to WCW around this time. It's rough. It's a rough time to be a WWF fan. It does get better next year. A little bit. But you don't see you don't see them actually fight back until 1998. But regardless of that, commentary was Vince McMahon, Jim Ross, and Mr. Perfect. Now, Jerry the King Lawler was there. He had a match with Jake the Snake Roberts, which I'll talk about in just a second. I hated that match. Uh, he was still doing commentary, but they decided to give Mr. Perfect and Jim Ross a shot. If I'm not mistaken, Mr. Perfect also leaves not too long after this, and we also see him in the NWO. Uh, Howard the Fink came back to do ring announcing. I don't know why he missed last year's SummerSlam. I never asked about that. Why was Howard the Fink gone from last year's SummerSlam? Anyways... Here goes the main card. Sabio Vega taking on Owen Hart. Opening match, it was decent. Owen worked with an injury. He had a broken uh, 
I think it was like a broken wrist, maybe a broken hand. He had a cast on, that's all I know. Um, it was a decent match, wasn't all that spectacular. They worked hard, but Owen Hart won, as he should have. He used the cast to get him the victory because he's a heel. And then we get an interview from Mankind. Mick Foley, his debut persona, Mankind. Uh, Mankind was in this boiler room as the interviewer mentioned that his match will be against The Undertaker, which is what the feud was all about, and we'll talk about that match. I really like what they did in that match. Mankind licked one of the pipes, because he's a sicko, <laughs> and then warned The Undertaker not to come in, because what awaits him is a fate worse than death. As you guys know, Mankind, Mick Foley, is one of the greatest promoists in wrestling, and he would only get better. When he's able to be himself, when he's able to actually talk, this man can drive people to arenas like no other. And you'll see that in the future. Next up is a fatal four way elimination tag match for the tag team championships. Who's in this match? Uh, the Smoking Guns with Sonny. So Sonny is no longer with the. Uh, what's his name? Skip. Uh, the Body Donnas. And by the way, I'm just now realizing that. Skip was, what's his name from ECW? Sonny's actual boyfriend. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry about that. A lot of people are like, hey, Deluxe Man, that's, that's what's his name? And I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Chris Candino. Yeah. Sorry. Anyways, it's Smoking Duck Guns. That's Billy and Bart Gun. The New Rockers, Mario Gennetti and some other guy. Leaf Cassidy, I think. Uh, I talked about Skip and Zip, the body donuts, and then the Godwins. No idea who they are. Godwins, okay. I know Hillbilly Jim was the manager. I know about Hillbilly Jim, but... Okay. I didn't like this match. I thought it was kind of boring, actually. I, I know they tried. Ugh, let me get situated, sorry. I know they tried to make this work, but... You know, again... The lack of star power really hurt the WWF. And Vince McMahon tried so hard to put this over. Hey, the new generation of tag team wrestling and blah, 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 blah. No. No. It wasn't, it wasn't anywhere close to that. Nowhere close. The new generation doesn't show up until... Well, I mean... When did the New Age Outlaw start? Is, is that going to start next year? You know, with... uh. Road Dog and Billy Gunn. I know DX doesn't start until... No, DX starts next year. So it starts next year, right? We'll find out. <clears throat> Anyways, the Smoking Guns won. Because, you know... I, I guess... I guess they had to win! Uh, Sunny was with them. And speaking of Sunny, after the match, she showed this huge, amazingly hot picture of herself above the ring. They just... Fireworks went off, and then a picture fell, and she was hot as hell. So this was when they were experimenting with sex appeal. And of course, who else do you experiment with that other than Sunny? So this was like the... It wasn't like the beginning, like beginning, beginning of the Attitude Era, but this was one of those hints that, okay, we're trying something different here with WWF. Speaking of hot, Goldust with Marlena, that's Terry Reynolds, Versus Wild Man Mark Merrow with Sable. Sable. Yep. The match was okay. I didn't really care about the match, honestly. I cared more about the women on the outside. Terry Reynolds and Sable? Bruh. Bruh. Sable, though. We'll get into Sable much later. But we talk about sex appeal. Mm. But Goldust and Mark Merrow, they were alright. This was when Dustin Reynolds came in with the Goldust gimmick. When he first debuted at it, when he first debuted with it, it wasn't what it would become. The crazy, you know, daring, male sexuality threatening gimmick that we know it is. It'll get there one day, but not right now. It's just a guy in a face paint and he wears a wig. After that, we had British Bulldog taking on Psycho Sid. I think those are reversed. I think Psycho Sid versus British Bulldog came before. I don't care. It's it's so 
skippable that I forgot the order of the match. I think actually British Bulldog and Psycho Sid happened before the Marlena and Golda the Marlena Goldas Wild Man Mark Merrill and Sable match. I don't care. Do you care? Whatever. Psycho Sid beat British Bulldog because he had to, I suppose. And then Ahmed Johnson had a video package where he had to vacate the uh, IC championship because he got hurt. And then we had Farouk wearing a helmet. Don't, don't, don't ask me why he was wearing a helmet. He came out with Sonny and said he is going to be the next IC champion. Because. Because. Yeah. And then we got, oh god, this is when it happens. Jade the Snake Roberts versus Jerry the King Lawler. So Jerry the King Lawler is taunting Jake because of his alcoholism. The whole story was, I'm going to taunt you with your problems. I'm going to throw alcohol in your face. I'm going to shove it down your throat that you're an alcoholic and you have issues. And blah, 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 blah. This was horrible. This wasn't This wasn't the kind of, oh, I'm going to have this guy get this much heat so you can hate him and want to see him lose kind of match. This was just in bad taste. I hated the storyline. I don't even know why. Well, I know why Jerry the King Lawler agreed to it because this is what he gets off on. He gets off on that real heat. Jerry likes white heat. Because in his mind, heat is heat. I think there is a certain kind of heat you don't want. And this wasn't the heat he needed. And honestly, the match didn't even turn out that well. Most of the match was them just talking and Jerry taunting him. They didn't even wrestle. And when they wrestled, they looked bad. And then he beat some with a horrible roll-up. Ugh, Jerry the King Lawler wins. And that was also dumb. You gonna give him all that heat for him to beat Jake? Yeah, this was dumb. I didn't like this at all. Maybe y'all did. I didn't. I thought this was garbage. Ugh. And I love what Jim Ross said at the end of it. The, how this is not an athletic contest. It was humiliation. Yeah, it was It was humiliating for all parties involved. Horrible match. Probably one of the worst I've seen at SummerSlam. We follow that up with the awesome Boiler Room bra. Between Mankind and The Undertaker. Really good match. It is everything you expect it to be. With a twist at the end. So they're brawling backstage. Lots of cool spots. Craziness. We get to the ring. All the way to the ring. We see Paul Bearer with the urn. And Taker is like, give me the urn. Give me the power of the urn. And Bearer goes, no, Taker, no. And he's like, what the hell? What do you mean, no? Then Mankind attacks him, and then Paul Bearer gives Mankind the urn. Paul Bearer turns heel and hits Taker over the head with the urn and helps Mankind beat him. Yeah, that's a crazy twist. As you guys know, Paul Bearer eventually goes on to manage Kane, who doesn't appear until, what, next year? When does Hell in a Cell happen next year? I know it's after SummerSlam. But eventually he becomes the manager of Kane and then he just flips back and forth between Kane and Taker throughout their rivalry. And we'll get to all that later on. Regardless, um, someone just messaged me. We'll leave her alone for right now. Um, awesome match. Great match. Definitely recommend you see it. Many events. This is most likely the reason you clicked on the video. Most of you want to know my opinions on the main event. Well, the story behind the main event. Let me talk about the match real quick and then we'll get into Shawn Michaels burying Vader. So Shawn Michaels, the heartbreak kid, was the champion and he fought Vader. Big Van, Big Van, not Big Van, Big Bad, Big Van, whatever. Big Van Vader with Jim Cornette in his corner. The match itself. I wasn't a fan of the false finishes. I wasn't a fan of the count out. Wasn't a fan of the DQ. I wish it was just a clean match. Because here's my thing. I believe, I believe we could have actually had a SummerSlam Classic with these two. That's just my thoughts. You know, I would have loved to have had uh, Heartbreak Kid Shawn Michaels and his prime go one-on-one -on -one 
clean with the monster. The biggest, most athletic, most dangerous big man in wrestling. And just have an awesome match. I could see them having a classic. We didn't get that. And there's a reason behind that. So let's just get to the story real quick. The match was good. Here's what I will say. It was still a good match. A lot of people saying it was a horrible match because of how he had all these false finishes and Shawn Michaels winning when he shouldn't have won. They had a good match. Was it as good as it should have been? Absolutely not. But you cannot take away from the effort and the drama they did have. So... I would at least be kind enough to say it was a good match. That should have been a lot better than what it was. So let's talk about this story. Those of you who don't know, back then, the plan was for Vader to come to the WWE as a former WCW champion and dominate everybody. He was supposed to take over the entire roster and be the guy. That was the plan originally. And then when he fought Shawn Michaels, the story was he would beat Shawn Michaels here at SummerSlam. And then they would carry their feud past Survivor Series to the Royal Rumble, where I believe it was scheduled for him to win the title back. So he was going to beat Shawn Michaels here, go on a pretty strong, somewhat lengthy run, and then drop it back to Shawn anyways. So to me, that sounded a lot better. It couldn't have hurt him all that much. I mean, they needed that during this time. Unfortunately... As Jim Cornette and others have said, Shawn Michaels did not like working with Vader. And he made it known he did not like working with Vader, even during the match. Remember during the match when Shawn Michaels was going for an elbow drop and then he stopped midair, fell on his feet and stomped Vader in the head and then screamed, Move! Move, you idiot! That was a shoot. He broke character. Because he got angry at Vader for not moving. As I said before, Shawn Michaels was very hard to work with back then. And even he will tell you he was a jerk. And even I didn't like it. I was I was not a fan of that moment at all. I don't think he, did, he didn't need to do that. Um, Cornette also mentioned that the Michaels radio storyline uh, was supposed to blow off. Uh, regardless of how it was going to happened here at SummerSlam, Michaels was going to get the championship back in the end. You know, he, he always goes back to that. Uh, but instead of doing any of that, instead of making Vader a top guy, instead of actually going out of their way to make their product interesting and not just have the same people in the main event scene, they gave Michaels a victory and then they killed it. They buried Vader. Following this match, he was never the same. The monster character died. He just lost to everybody. He became a regular person on the roster. Which is not what Vader was meant to be. He wasn't meant to be that. And looking back on it, I, I, don't, I don't think I appreciated what they did to Vader here. He never became a world champion. In WWF. In WCW. In New Japan Pro Wrestling. In every other promotion he worked in, he was a world champion except for WWF. So yeah, they screwed up. Big time with Vader. And yeah, Sean deserves some of the blame. Because he could have helped put him over. He really could have, but he didn't. Shawn Michaels will always go down as one of the greats. He will be, in my opinion, one of the greatest wrestlers of all time, even despite this. But what he did was wrong. What he did was absolutely dreadful to Vader. Um, I think what happened, what ended up happening, is that they ended up giving the championship to Vader... Uh, Vader's replacement, which was Sid, right? Yeah, Sid ends up winning the championship. And then he ends up... I think he ends up defending it against Taker at WrestleMania 13. Yeah, WrestleMania 13. That's 1997. Was that supposed to be Vader? See, something tells me that was supposed to be Vader. I think what was supposed to happen is... See, someone tells us... I read this and I see... That Shawn Michaels was supposed to get the belt back. But in my mind, what would have made a better story is that Vader beats Shawn here. He holds that belt till WrestleMania and drops it to Taker. You know, that just seems a lot better than him winning the belt and dropping it to Shawn at San Antonio and then 
we go about things the way they went. Because honestly, that WrestleMania 13 match wasn't all that memorable. I think between you and me, Taker versus Vader would have been much better. That's just my thoughts. But yeah, there you go. That's my thoughts on the situation. This is a weird SummerSlam. It had a lot of craziness to it, but in the end, Vader is still a Hall of Famer. Vader is still one of the greatest of all time. This did not kill his career, although it hurt his career, his time in WWF. People still remember Vader. People still know who Vader is. And Shawn Michaels, he might he might have been a jerk back then. And for the next two SummerSlams, he will continue to be a jerk. But he eventually gets better. And you guys know. We'll get to that SummerSlam when he makes his return. 2002. That's coming. I can't wait for that one. But here, yeah, I can't be on his side. He buried Vader. And anybody saying otherwise, why would you? I mean, even Shawn Michaels admits that he buried him. He wasn't happy about it, but he did it. Regardless, that's my thoughts on this year's SummerSlam. Um, again, average show. It was saved by those two really good matches at the end because... <laughs> Imagine if those two matches didn't happen. Yeah, this would not be a very good SummerSlam. But give me your thoughts down below about it. How do you feel about this SummerSlam? How do you feel about Shawn Michaels burying Vader? And anything I talked about. Thank you for watching. This is your boy Deluxe signing off. Right here in your boy Deluxe world. I promise you. The intro will be back. I just didn't feel like these SummerSlams were worth the intro. Because they're not really all that good. But 97. 97 I'm excited about. 98 I'm excited about. 99 I remember. And 2000 and going forward, I remember watching. So these next few SummerSlams, past 98, I haven't really seen 97 or 98 in their entirety. But I have seen 99 going forward. So those SummerSlams going forward, they're going to be fun. Because I remember watching every single one of them. Regardless, thank you guys for watching. This is your boy, The X-Man. I'll catch you next time. Peace.